Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over the Thule Hitching Post Pro for bike rack here on a 2022 Kia Telluride. So the Hitching Post Pro is going to be an excellent bike rack option for you and the family as we can carry up to four bikes. Now this is what it's classified as a hanging style bike rack. There's two main types, hanging and platform. So both of these are going to be good for certain things. They do each have their cons as well. A hanging style bike rack is going to be much more cost effective than a platform style bike rack. It's also going to be much lighter and easy to maneuver getting it on and off the vehicle. Platform bike racks are notoriously heavy and cumbersome. So hanging style bike racks are really going to be geared towards these road bikes such as what we see here because we do have sort of one major stipulation and that's weight capacity. For this particular rack here it's going to be 35 pounds. So any bike under 35 pounds is going to be great. However, if you have one that's heavier than that, that's when you're gonna to wanna to consider the platform style racks. I'd also like to point out that the hanging style racks are gonna work best with bikes that have that horizontal top tube. There are a lot of women's bikes and kids' bikes that have sort of come down at an angle and it's not quite horizontal. In which case, we can still use this bike rack, but you would wanna consider getting an adapter bar that Thule offers. It just allows you to have a level connection. So when we've arrived at the trails or we've arrived back home from a day of riding, it's very easy to get your bike on and off. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull outwards on these straps here. So these little straps, I really like these, they're super durable. Um, we've been using this one for quite a while and it's held up. There isn't any strains, no signs of it breaking. And there's also multiple holes here that allow you to accommodate different bike shapes or different frame shapes rather. But we have two on the top here. Just simply pull those off going to be a little tab here at the bottom it locks into. We'll push those to the side. Then we have the one on the bottom here. Push that one off. And those are our three straps. So now we're ready to lift the bike up and off. So now that we have the bike off, we can take a little bit closer look at the cradles. So these cradles are really durable. They work very well. In regards to the material, it's kind of like a hard plastic, if you will, with a little touch of rubber. I'm not quite sure exactly what that material is, but it's very durable. It's definitely gonna hold up over time. Now, if you notice these channels in the bottom here, what these are for is, these are gonna be for the brake cables. If you have them running underneath the top tube there, normally, if we didn't have those little divots there, the cable is just gonna rub on the frame of the bike causing damage. Whereas if we do have those little channels, the cable can sit in there, our frame can rest on top, and we don't have to worry about running the finish on our bike. So a measurement for you guys here that's gonna be useful to some of you, it's gonna be the overall length of your vehicle with the rack installed and the arms extended. So what we're just gonna do is we're simply gonna measure from the back point of the hatch to the outwardmost point of the arms. This is gonna be right at about 42 inches. So something else I'd like to point out is the next feature of our bike rack here. So we can actually fold these arms down for a more compact storage. So let's say you normally park your vehicle in a garage, but you don't necessarily have a ton of space within that garage when your vehicle's in there. Therefore, we need a way to make the bike rack more compact without removing it completely. And we can do that here with this particular rack. We're simply going to fold down the arms, pull out this pin here, and then we can actually re-secure them in this position here. So again, the reason this is gonna be most useful is those tight parking spaces in your garage. And if you do wanna double check, we can go ahead and give you another measurement. To the back of the hatch, to the outward most point on the rack, you're looking at about 20 inches. So if you guys do plan on leaving the rack installed on the vehicle, even when we're not using it, you can certainly do that. Just make sure you store your arms in this position here. Now, however, you may be interested to know how are we gonna get in the hatch with our bike rack installed? Well, that's another great feature built into this rack. What we need to do is, on the bottom here, we're gonna have another pin we need to pull out. Very simple. And then our bike rack is actually gonna tilt down towards the ground. Now, don't worry guys, there's a rubber stop there so you don't have to worry about the rack falling all the way down. I do like to point out that you do need to remove the bikes if you do need to get into the hatch but we don't actually have to remove the entire rack. But as you can see here, we can easily open up the hatch, get what we need in and out easily, we can shut the hatch, and then just simply lift the rack up into position and then re-secure it with our pin. So if we take a closer look at the connection to the trailer hitch on the vehicle, 
So you should notice that we have a separate piece here. So this is actually a two-piece design. Now the reason for this is this uh, particular bike rack is going to be compatible with both a one and a quarter inch and two inch trailer hitch receivers while we're using this adapter. Now I believe there's only two inch trailer hitch options for this vehicle, so that's not really a big selling point for you guys, unless you have another vehicle with that smaller opening, and in which case we could easily transfer our rack back and forth. Now in regards to how the bike rack is secured to the trailer hitch, that's gonna be the hitch pin here. So this is actually a hitch bolt, an anti-rattle hitch bolt. And what happens is when we tighten this down, it's really gonna secure the shank inside the receiver tube, making a nice and tight connection, preventing our bikes from bouncing around. If we go ahead and give the bike rack a good shake, you'll see there's pretty much no movement whatsoever inside that receiver tube. We're actually moving the vehicle. This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side to side action, such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then, onto our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action, such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or even uneven pavement. Last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway. So in summary, this is a very nice bike rack options. I think it's one of our best sellers here at eTrailer, in fact. Now, the reason for this is we're gonna get that great Thule quality with this rack, but not necessarily at the Thule price you may be accustomed to. A lot of the other Thule racks are very high dollar. This one here is actually one of their more cost-effective options. You do forego a couple features such as the premium options have like locks, but you can actually add this to this bike rack if that's a feature that's important to you. But if not, we're still gonna get some of those other great features such as the anti-rattle hitch bolt and the anti-sway cradles. So overall, you really can't go wrong with this option here. It's gonna be great for you and your family.